Hello, Eckart Meise. You are CDO at Vitra. Um, CDO is Chief Design Officer. Is that right? Yes. This is a new position which was founded one year ago, but you are working at Vitra since, I think, 15 years or something. How did it come that Vitra founded this position newly? Well, we as a company believe a lot in the voice of the designers. And that voice should not only be heard when it comes to product, but it should also be heard when it comes to presenting the product and communicating about the product because our clients in the end look for an authentic and very direct expression of a designer's thought about, about uh, um, uh, function, comfort or performance of a product and also about meaning of a product. So we found it, we restructured the company a little bit and we decided it would be the right way to actually give a structure to a bigger company, which is quite normal in the small companies. Th that means that you have a coordination of all design-related activities from product development to product marketing and product communication. And uh, so that the thoughts of the designer, which are always, of course, um, combined with our thoughts in a way, are, are actually arriving all the way into the market and they're not lost in the meantime somewhere because somebody else would do the marketing and then somebody who had done the development. Yeah. So it, concer it concerns responsibility for the product development, product marketing and uh, product communication. Okay. An yeah. overview about the whole, the whole story. Well, to an overview, it's important to have an overview, but it also it's important to have, of course, access and a say in how things are executed. Yeah. And um, you're working with many different designers. Some of them you have been working for more than 20 years, like Antonio Citerio. Some of them are very new and uh, young designers as well. Um, what, are, what is the criteria to choose a designer for Vitra? What, what's, how do you select? Well, it's not that we constantly select because our policy is a more of a self restriction if you want it's a restrictive policy in the sense that we want to have long-term corporations with designers so we we think our my personal uh, image i usually use is like a choir so we say okay we want to have a choir and we want to sing a certain perform a certain piece so we need certain voices and certain our designers usually we call them authors by the way not only designers they have a position in design and they have a view on on what they want to give with their designs and they have a view on how they want things to be executed and they stand for certain values and certain certain positions and what uh, are these values and positions for example? well it's different for everybody yeah, yeah. so so some are more uh, let's say uh, some are more looking for poetic expressions others are looking more for uh, um, the reduction and the essence and things and so on but but basically we in the end if one position is taken by somebody, then we think about a very long-term cooperation. So let's say within that choir, of course, if if you work with someone like Antonio Citerio, then a certain voice is there. And if you work with Jasper Morris, and a certain voice is there. If you work with the Burulex, a certain voice is there, or with Alberto Meda, or with Hella Jungerius. So so um, in that sense, we work with very few people, but over a long term, which doesn't mean that we're not talking to other designers and, and, see, and, and seeing what's going on and so on. But it's quite rarely only that we we take on new working relationships yeah. and um, you as CDO you are also um, part of the product development so how does Vitra what is Vitra's vision for the for the office of the future we, we know the situation right now um, but but how do you think it's gonna develop yeah we we think that it's not really and there will not be an office revolution but there will be an evolution that is all basically linked to certain big trends in the office and one is certainly that we are in a knowledge economy now and we are not uh, we are not in an economy where where production or or um, let's say a more administrative way of working with information is the key thing we are more coming to a knowledge economy where Working together, creating knowledge, sharing knowledge is the main, the main issue. For the office, this means that even though in theory everybody could work at home because the mobile technology is there these days, the office will become even more important again as a more diverse a space that will answer to, to certain needs and that will bring a certain platform for social interaction between people. 
So we will go to the office to work together, learn together, share knowledge and, and create new knowledge and be innovative in the sense. And, uh, and we think that this will focus the office much more around um, the, the, the needs and the well-being of the people who work there instead of focusing on technology or other aspects of the office. So it's a, it, it's going to be a living area for many people and uh, a flexible living area for many people. One aspect is that, of course, that uh, um, life happens in the office. And the office, you don't go to the office and you have to leave your life outside of the office. That's one aspect, yes. Thank you very much.